Before I put the drywall on the ceiling and insulate it, I ran this wire up into the ceiling here, 10 gauge wire for the lift. So here's the wire coming into the box. It's just uh, two hots and a ground, and I've got this 30 amp breaker here, double pole breaker. Just got to pop this breaker in the box and uh, wire it in. So you can see now I've got my both black and white wire coming down to this 30 amp breaker and it doesn't matter which one you hook to which. Um, and then I always like to uh, cut a little piece of insulation off and label it. And then since it's 240 volt, your uh, ground wire just goes to ground. It doesn't use neutral. Since this is a sub panel, ground and neutral are separated. So we didn't hook anything up to this uh, neutral bus. So let's take a look at this thing as of right now. When the guys were here installing it, I temporarily jumped power from the ceiling down to this pigtail that comes with the lift. So the lift is already wired inside here so you can just power it up during install, which is really convenient. But there are a couple really important things that need to happen to make this lift safe to operate. One of them is this pigtail hanging out here goes up to an interrupt switch. So that's got to get wired in. And then the other really important thing is that what I have done here, which is just hardwire power uh, temporarily, that gets power to the, to the unit, but you really want a method of being able to disconnect power in an emergency such as if this switch were to get stuck, like stuck in the on position. There's a whole lot of reasons why you wouldn't want to wait for the car, if you even had a car on there, to get to the top and bump the interrupt switch. So you do need some method to disconnect power to the unit outside of just that interrupt switch, and it needs to be mounted in the general vicinity of the lift. So the first thing I want to do is get this cover off of here. You can see it's already wired and if you look at the manufacturer's wiring diagram for this interrupt switch it basically wants you to go um, basically cut this and we're not going to use the ground but we're going to take the blue and looks like brown wire and uh, wire that one side to each side of the cut. The first thing I'm going to do is actually feed these uh, wires through this plug. So it's really nice. They give you a um, they give you a plug there. But uh, as you tighten, I know it's hard to see there, but as you tighten that, it actually firms that up. So that's nice and tight and weatherproof now. And now I can take this and splice it in here. So you can see now that I have the wires from the interrupt switch. Uh, one side is wired to the main switch here and the other side is wired into this uh, junction block. And I couldn't get this terminal out uh, and I didn't want to strip it or anything so I ended up just splicing and soldering this wire in. And then the instructions say that you don't use the ground. Uh, so now, when you go ahead and operate this switch, I've turned the power back on to the unit. Because if you operate this switch, you should be able to push up on the bar and make sure that it interrupts the power. So, you ready, Dad? Mm -hmm. He's holding up on the bar and that interrupts the motor. I've had my finger on the button the whole time. So if you release it. 
So that verifies that the interrupt switch is working. So I've decided I'm gonna mount my switch box right next to my uh, lock release lever. And the metal's not really thick right here, which is why I decided to go there. I don't really wanna drill through this thick column. Uh, so I've got a couple marks here and I'm actually going to drill and tap and uh, use, use these little quarter inch stainless bolts that I have laying around with lock washers on them. So I've got the plate for my switch box mounted and I've got my connectors with my insulators on the top and bottom. I also have my plate for the ceiling connection and then I've got my flexible conduit cut to length and I pulled my wire through there so time to hook it all up. The other thing I did was uh, pull these wires out of the factory uh, kind of pigtail and then I put my own uh, connector here that'll accept the flexible conduit with an insulator. So I've got both lips installed now and I just have them wire nutted together for now where the switch is going to go because I don't have the switch yet. Because this is stranded wires coming out of the motor and I'm hooking it to solid wire uh, coming off the switch, I did put some tin on each one of these connections and then I'll put my wire nuts on, on top of that and I'll put some electrical tape on it to keep the wire nuts from ever vibrating loose. It's really simple, white to white, black to black, green to ground. Um, so I'm done inside the box and I'm going to put this cover back on. So I finally got my switch in the mail. This is a double pole 30 amp switch from Leviton. And it actually works side to side. So I'll have my two hots coming in this side from the breaker and my two hots over here going to the motor. And this is the rest of the enclosure right here that the switch is going to fit inside of. So here's the switch installed. My two hots from the ceiling are coming on this side of the switch. And my two hots going to the motor are on this side of the switch going down there. And then this cover just comes on. Like that. So here's what it looks like all done. You can see up there I ended up drilling and tapping the lift on the top part of the column where the metal is thinner and the carriage doesn't ride. Um, technically you're supposed to have a hold down within 10 inch of like this box and within 10 inches of where it comes out of the ceiling box. Uh, I'm going to see if my electrical inspector gives me any crap about it. We'll see. I can always throw a couple more on there if he wants me to. Um, I did zip tie my limit switch to the flexible conduit here. And then this is what this switch looks like here. And it's on right now. I'm going to keep it on all the time because I'm really just using it as a cutoff switch. But it's there in case this button ever sticks. I can just reach up here really quickly, flip that off, and kill the motor. The other cool thing about this particular switch box is that if I were sharing this space with somebody else, I can shut my lift off and actually stick a padlock through here, and then nobody else can use my lift. If you made it this far, thanks for watching my video. I really like this style of lift wiring with a small box compared to some of the bigger options. But let me know what you think. Give me your questions. Give me your comments. And let me know if there's anything else you guys want to see a video on inside the shop here.